Alright, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am an avid herpetologist and we're here with another deck profile today. Today we're going to be going a little bit outside of my usual wheelhouse and we're going to be talking about Yellow Vaccine. Now this deck is a pretty tiered deck if you play it correctly in the current meta. It's actually very strong, has a lot of really unique tools available to it. And one of the cool things about this deck is, very similar to my pet deck of Machindramon, this deck is very much not solved. There's a lot of very cool tech choices and directions you can go with the Yellow Vaccine build. So today we're going to be looking at my particular list, the reasons that I have chosen the cards that I have, and how I think these cards will perform in the current meta. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now the egg is going to be pretty standard for the Yellow Vaccine list. We are going to be playing four copies of Kiaromon. Whenever a card is removed from your security stack, one of your Digimon gain jamming. Now this deck is very good about using its security kind of like a toolbox, where we're going to be digging in there and pulling cards out pretty frequently, and every time we do that, we get to give one of our Digimon jamming for some easy security checks. Now we're going to be playing plenty of cards that are really easy to abuse this with, so that is going to be it. Uh, Kiaramon is pretty standard for Yellow Vaccine Egg, so nothing too out of the ordinary there. Now for our rookies, we're of course going to be playing four of the flagship rookie, and that is going to be four copies of BT-14 Patamon. Now Patamon's start of main phase effect lets it check your security stack and digivolve into any yellow vaccine level 4 in your stack without paying the cost. Very, very good. It's also got a really nice inheritable that will gain you memory whenever cards are put back into your security. Now, if you happen to be successful in digivolving using its effect, you will be able to put a yellow vaccine card from your hand into your security stack, immediately triggering to gain a memory. So going memory positive right off the bat. This Padmon is very, very strong. Uh, it's definitely going to be one of the, of course, best rookies that we want to see in an opening hand, just so we can push up on the second turn, go into something, and immediately go memory positive. And we've got plenty of really cool champions that we can go into thanks to that ability. So Padamon is going to be one of the real centerpieces of the deck. I'm also going to be opting for other copies of Padamon. We are playing three copies of Padamon from EX3. On play reveals the top four and lets you add a yellow card with the angel trait and a card with the four great dragons trait among them to your hand. Now, of course, we're not playing any four great dragons in this list, but we are playing quite a few different angels. Um, we are playing some copies of Seraphimon, and there is an errata around this that allows the Patamon to add any card with Seraph. Seraph is considered to be part of the Angel trait. It's part of the very confusing, headache-inducing errata list that came out with EX3. But this gives us just a couple of extra searchers attached to a Patamon name. And we are also playing two copies of Structure Deck 3 Patamon. Now this Patamon has an inheritable where whenever an opponent's Digimon has its DP reduced to zero, and is destroyed during your turn, you can gain another free memory. We are playing quite a few different DP reduction effects in this list. Of course, that is Yellow's trademark method of destroying Digimon, so we are going to be playing two copies of that, just kind of round out our rookie suit. And finally, we are playing four non-Patamon rookies. We are playing four copies of Kudamon. Reveal the top three cards of your deck. You can add any yellow Digimon with the vaccine trait and a yellow tamer among them to your hand. It's a very, very good searcher since most of our deck is going to be vaccine. Now it is worth mentioning that Patamon himself and a few other cards, they are actually data. They are not vaccine, so make sure you are not adding your Patamons and checking which of your cards are in fact vaccine. But it is still, again, one of the best searchers the deck has access to. Being able to grab a tamer in addition is just icing on the cake. Now we're going to start talking about our champions. And the first champion I want to talk about is actually my personal favorite. I'm choosing to play four copies of Bulkmon. Now this Bulkmon is from BT6, has a Your Turns effect. While you have three or more security cards, it has security attack plus one. So in a perfect world where you have Patamon in your racing area and you're able to push up, on the second turn, you're going to be able to digivolve into a Bulkmon from security, gain a memory, give the Bulkmon jamming, and you are already able to swing in for two free security checks without having to worry about it being deleted, which is super, super powerful, especially when you consider that we are playing some ace cards in this deck, so you don't even need to do anything else right away with that Bulkmon. You can just leave him in play. So he is an excellent early aggression card, and definitely one of the cards that I want to be seeing off of Patamon, especially early, most often. Now, we are going to be playing three copies of the new Secret Rare BT-14 Anjuman. Now, this Anjuman has some really powerful effects. It is a Secret Rare for good reason. It digivolves from Patamon for a cost of two. 
When attacking, you can delete him in order to use one of the following effects. You can place one of your opponent's Digimon with the virus attribute into the bottom of their security stack, or give one of your opponent's Digimon minus 5,000 DP for the turn. Obviously a little bit less powerful, but Anjumon's entire gimmick is of course going to be countering Virus Digimon. That's going to be the primary reason I am only playing him at three copies. I think he is of course fantastic in certain matchups, but in others he's just kind of middle of the road. He's not super, super excellent, but he is definitely going to be worth three slots just for the sheer advantage he gives you in those matchups. Now our next level four is actually going to be two copies of Rapidmon, specifically the armor form Rapidmon that is level four. This is a vaccine trait Digimon, so you'll be able to grab him with all of your vaccine synergies. When Digivolving, you can suspend one of your opponent's Digimon for each tamer you have in play, then up to three of your opponent's suspended Digimon get minus 5,000 DP for the turn. Rapidmon is kind of a good meta call, I think, right now. Where, again, I talked a lot about this in my Machine Dramon video, but when a lot of the top decks are going to be things like Lugamon and D-Brigade and Bloomlord, being able to snipe up to three bodies just by digivolving into a champion is going to be very nice. It's going to be really good for staging off a lot of early game aggression and making sure that we're not losing to very wide board states. So I'm choosing to play two copies of Rapidmon for that reason. Um, I'm also going to be playing a single copy of Geo Greymon from BT13. Many of you guys are probably already pretty familiar with this card. It became notorious and is actually now limited thanks to Shine Greymon. When Digivolving, you can search your security stack, play a, a red or yellow tamer, and if you do, you can recover one. So not only is this going to take cards out of our security stack to trigger Kiaramon, let's just play some of our tamers, which is of course always helpful. Ultimately, we are playing six tamers in this deck, so our chances of seeing one are not terrible. Um, but I'm going to be playing my single copy of Geo Greymon, and the last champion that we're playing is going to be a single copy of Kazemon. Pretty standard stuff, just making sure that we have the ability to go hybrid for game if we are able to get rid of our opponent's security. Early aggression, thanks to Bulkmon, we may be able to get there sooner than you realize. So our single copy of Kazemon is just chilling right here, just to make sure that we have that option. Now, Kazemon is a variable Digimon, not vaccine, so again, make sure you are remembering that you cannot uh, grab her with any of your vaccine synergies. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for our champions. Now moving into our ultimates. This is the first Digimon deck profile I'm making that includes Ace Digimon. So let's go ahead and talk about the one we are including in this deck. And that is going to be four copies of Magna Anjumon Ace. So the Ace mechanic is brand new in BT14. It basically, what it does, is like a hand trap for my Yu-Gi-Oh players out there that basically lets you do things on your opponent's turn. If your opponent is attacking you, after when attacking effects have gone through, you have the option of Digivolving into an Ace Digimon from your hand for free, as long as you have a proper target to Digivolve onto. And has what a mechanic known as Overflow, where if this card ever leaves your battle area for any reason whatsoever, it's going to basically lose you an immediate three memory. So you have to be careful with these cards. There is a downside. But his on play and when digivolving effect, as long as you have five or fewer security cards, lets you immediately recover one. Then for the rest of the turn, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 1000 DP for each card in your security stack. So as I mentioned, a really nice, easy turn one slash turn two play. If we have our BT 14 Patamons in play, go into our Bulkmon from security and leave it there. As long as we have a Magna Angemon Ace in our hand, it's going to be a pretty safe card to just kind of let sit. It's perfectly fine for us to let our Bulkmon hang out because there's a very good chance they're not going to be able to swing over it. Now, obviously, that's not going to be account for potential deletion effects, but if they do happen to swing into it under normal circumstances on turn two, you'd be able to Evo onto Bulkmon, recover up to six, and give an opponent's Digimon minus 6,000 DP. Now, if you consider that in the context of Magna Angemon himself being an 8,000 DP body, basically what that means is as long as they are swinging with something 14,000 DP or less, you are going to at the very least be able to trade. So very, very powerful interaction for a level five. And since it is, of course, a vaccine, it covers all of our synergies there. So super, super strong. Magna Angemon is one of the cards that makes this deck tick. So definitely need to be playing no less than four copies. Now, the other level fives are going to be a little more lenient. You're probably going to see very different things in different vaccine lists. For me personally, I'm actually taking the advice of someone from my locals, Mr. Miguel, a quick shout out for you, buddy. Most of this list is actually not my idea. A lot of this was Miguel's list, starting with three copies of Rise Greymon from BT2. 
Now this Rise Greymon is 8 to play, 7,000 DP, 3 to Digivolve, has a when Digivolving effect to play a Yellow Tamer card from your hand, but on play effects of that Tamer do not activate. He also has a Relevant Inheritable, where if you have 3 or more Yellow Tamers in play, the Digimon gets Security Attack plus 1. So it ends up being a pretty aggressive Inheritable, it lets us get, again, some nice aggression to try to smash through our opponent's security as quickly as we can. Now, this Rise Greymon is basically being opted for over the others because we are not playing copies of Marcus. All of our Tamers are copies of TK, and most Rise Greymons are only synergizing with specifically Marcus Damon. So we're playing this Rise Greymon for those reasons. Now, we are also going to be playing a total of two copies of Rise Greymon X Antibody. When Digivolving, you may play, again, a yellow or red Tamer from your hand, and if this Digimon has Rise Greymon or X Antibody in its sources, you can then give an opposing Digimon minus 2,000 DP for each of your Tamers until the end of the turn. So again, this is a really nice way to potentially snipe some of the opposing small bodies, or at the very least set up some larger ones to potentially be swung over. Made even easier, since Rise Greymon X Antibody also has a Your Turns effect, to gain an extra 1,000 DP for every Tamer you have in play. So that's going to about do it for our level 5s. We have a nice little tight Rise Greymon package that we're going to be playing in addition to our Magnemon Aces. Now all of these cards are again Vaccine, so they are going to be continuing to hold onto those synergies. And we're going to move on into our Megas. For our Megas, I'm choosing to play 3 copies of BT14 Seraphimon. When Digivolving, you can immediately recover 1, and on all turns, if a card is added to your security stack, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 7,000 DP, and this Digimon gets an extra security check for the turn. So if you have this in play and happen to find a way to recover on the opponent's turn, whether it be Magna Angemon or something else, basically all that does is give us the opportunity to give extra removal, which is of course, it's going to be super nice. This Seraphimon is also very aggressive, being able to get those extra checks. It's a vaccine, so we can digivolve into it from security. There's all sorts of good reasons to be playing this Seraphimon. But going right alongside with our Seraphimon, we are also going to be playing two copies of Shadow Seraphimon. Now, this is not a vaccine Digimon. It is a virus. During the opponent's turn, when a card is removed from your security stack, you can de-digivolve one on one of your opponent's Digimon. This is not a once per turn, so if they choose to ignore Shadow Seraphi and go for your security, every security that gets removed lets you de-digivolve on one of your opponent's Digimon, basically helping to stage off a lot of the big OTK decks. Things like Lugamon, for instance, is going to have a very hard time getting through this. Now, it also has an on-deletion effect, so if they choose not to go for your security and choose to handle him directly, on deletion, you recover one, and then one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 4,000 DP for the turn for every one of your security cards. So basically, they have to either choose to ignore Seraphi, go for security, and lose one of their tall stacks, or if they choose to handle Seraphi instead, they're going to potentially lose a body thanks to that on deletion effect. So Shadow Seraphi is pretty good, I think, in the current meta. I think he's definitely a card that players need to be very wary of the existence of. He's extremely difficult to play around if you don't have a way to out him cleanly. So Definitely, I'm going to be trying two copies of Shadow Seraphimon to begin with, and we are going to be playing a single level 7 in the deck, and that is a single copy of Shine Greymon Ruin Mode. Now, despite this card looking like a Virus Digimon, it is still a vaccine, meaning, again, it is going to hold on to those vaccine synergies. Shine Greymon is basically going to be our answer to wide board states. On Digivolution or Deletion, he gives minus 5,000 DP to the opponent's entire board, and that effect is going to linger until the end of your opponent's turn. So he's basically going to make sure that your opponent cannot play a ton of small bodies and swarm you out. He also has an end of attack effect to delete this Digimon and one of your opponent's Digimon, recover one, and then if you have a Tamer in play, let you hatch a Digi Egg again to an empty space in your breeding area. This Shine Greymon is basically, as I mentioned, there to help deal with wider board states. Between Magna Angemon, Rise Greymon, and Seraphimon, we've got a pretty decent number of ways that we can be handling taller stacks, but we also want to make sure that we have plenty of ways to be dealing with wider decks as well. So our Rapid Mons and our Rise Greymons are basically going to be our way to handle lots of bodies all at the same time to make sure that we're not getting out aggressioned and keep our security nice and high so we can benefit from all of our security effects. With that, we're going to go ahead and move into our Tamers. We're going to be playing four copies of TK from BT14. Three to play. On play, you can add the top card of your security stack to your hand, and then put a yellow card with the vaccine trait from your hand at the bottom of your security stack. Anytime a card is added to your security stack on your turn, you can suspend this Tamer to gain a memory. So basically, if you're playing him from your hand on your turn, you will be able to immediately put a vaccine card into your security, suspend him, gain a memory, and ultimately, all of that is all coming on a two-cost Tamer. So 
Definitely one of the stronger tamers out there, I think, in my personal opinion. Being able to stack your security just the way you want, while also being able to add an extra card to your hand through that initial effect to add your top card. It's, it's definitely good. This TK is super, super strong, especially in the vaccine shell. And we are also going to be playing two more copies of TK from BT1. This is a very old tamer. He is a memory setter. On play, you can search your security stack, reveal a card among them, and add it to your hand. If that card is yellow, then of course you're going to recover. Now, all of the cards in our deck are going to be yellow, so no matter what you add, naturally, you're going to be recovering one. All right, and before we wrap things up, we do have a couple of option cards we're going to be playing. First of all, we're going to be playing four copies of Emissary of Hope. This card is absolutely broken, should, in my opinion, definitely be played at a full four copies. It is only one to play, but let you search your security stack and then digivolve one of your Digimon into a yellow level 6 or lower Digimon with the vaccine trait from among them without paying the cost. Then, you, of course, you shuffle your security stack. Then, if Digivolved this way by an effect, if you have a Tamer with TK in its name, you then recover one. It has a security effect where you can play a Patamon from hand or trash without paying the cost, then add this card to your hand. Should they check this card and then you bring out a BT14 Patamon that they don't have a method of handling, you'll then, of course, get to Digivolve straight from your security, add this card to your hand. BT14 can go into a champion at the start of your turn. Then, you can use Emissary to go straight into a level 5. There's just whole stacks worth of combos that you can do with this deck. It's honestly really gross. Emissary of Hope is such a gross card. It's super, super powerful. I'm going to be playing four copies. And to wrap our list out, just to have a single removal option, I'm choosing to play one copy of Heaven's Judgment. All of the cards we've played, we've got lots of different colors showing. Of course, yellow is going to be our primary color, but between Rapidmon, Geo Gray, Rise Greymon X, Shadow Serafi, and Shine Gray, we have lots of other colors that we can add to our totals as well. So if we have any of our two colors, we're ultimately going to have a total of 18,000 DP reduction that we can distribute however we like. And that security effect just gives a blanket minus 12,000 DP for the turn. So Heaven's Judgment, again, is another final tool, helping us deal with wide strategies, potentially, helping us deal with taller strategies if we need it. It's very flexible. It's very powerful. Honestly, you can play any number of the different yellow removal options if you so choose. I'm playing so many different colors that I'm opting for Heaven's Judgment, but in your personal list, feel free to, you know, change that for whatever it is that you see fit based on your current meta. And yeah, with that, that is going to wrap up another deck profile. Thank you all so much for joining me. BT14 is shaping up to be an interesting format so far. We've got some new decks entering the format. I personally think it is going to be a very enjoyable format once things start to adjust and people get a little more accustomed to a lot of the new lists. But hopefully this list will give you at least a starting point if you are interested in building Yellow Vaccine yourself. Again, this may not be everybody's personal list. This is just the list that I'm going with. Thanks to suggestions from my buddy Miguel at my locals. But but you can build your list however you would like. There's a lot of different directions to take Yellow Vaccine. It's a very interesting, very flexible deck, and it's going to have a very nice ceiling if you do happen to get very good with it. So with that, I want to thank you all again for joining me. Again, I'm an avid herpetologist. Stay tuned for more deck profiles. If you liked this one, feel free to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Feel free to leave a comment down below with any other spicy tech cards you have found for your own Yellow Vaccine lists. And with that, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening, and I will catch you all next time.